Summer is here, and sports are finally back, which can only mean one thing. It's time to kick back, relax, and make some cash. Everyone has to start somewhere, which is why you want to get off on the right foot by choosing an established book like mybookie.ag. And with all the major sports seasons just around the corner, there's never been a better time to get in on the action. Dynamic betting lines and a simple-to-use platform make the process easier than it's ever been. Create your account in just a few easy steps. Deposit and begin placing your bets. Sign up now using promo code COACHTALK to get your deposit matched halfway all the way up to $1,000 plus $25 extra free play. That's promo code COACHTALK. Use it to score yourself an extra piece of the pie. With my bookie, you bet, you win, and most importantly, when you win, you get paid. Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. I am Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach, and I am here with my partner in crime, Mr. Andrew Hansen. And we are here on this wonderful Wednesday, July 22nd, to go over this week's PGA Tournament event. So we are fired up for that. How are you doing this hump day, Andrew? Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks. Yeah, I'm excited about some golf here. Uh, I have a feeling about this week. I think it could be something special, mm. uh, different field. A lot of the top names will not be there, but right. we're going to, you know, we've been digging in here on, on some of these obscure names uh, that you don't hear about as much. And that's going to give us the edge this week in DFS. Yeah, I'm, I'm fired up. And, you know, we have such such a solid process in place. And, you know, we're, we're starting to really uh, go over that you know, quite a bit because we want everybody to follow that pattern because it's really shown, you know, the process is shown to be foolproof, you know, long haul on DFS. And that's checking out this podcast, you know, reading any content or article like, you know, we we did release uh, Freddie's PGA article earlier today. So that's a great piece. And then following us on Twitter throughout the day, any changes, uh, news, weather updates, and then, of course, Fine, uh, finalizing that with being in Discord, excuse me, up until lock. And with PGA, it's a little bit different because there's not rainouts and cancellations. Generally, it's a rainout, it's just a delay. So we're we're finalizing. We will finalize lineups tonight. Um, but we, you know, if there is uh, a late scratch of a golfer or something, I mean, it happens very very rarely. But if it if there is, we will. Uh, get up on you know Discord and shoot that out there on Twitter as well, so we can catch it. But PGA is the only one you get a little bit more relaxed time frame to get that done. So follow that process. We're about ready to kick off MLB tomorrow. Uh, the season starts, so we're finishing up and transitioning over from KBO to MLB. So we'll be doing that next week, and. Uh, you know, we've got everything going. I was just watching basketball on TV, and I'm like, really? I mean, I couldn't believe that I'm watching basketball. And it was uh, the Nuggets. Did you see who the Nuggets threw out there on the floor? I got a talk no, NBA. I'm sorry. I, I can't I, help it. I saw a little bit of the Clippers scrimmage. Uh, I, I'm taping the Nuggets one. I'll watch it later. Well, wait till you see the lineup they started. They basically started almost four centers. So Joke, Joke, the Joker's got to be playing like the three, maybe, because they're they're using Bowl Bowl in there as well. Okay. So they got all the trees. It's wow. pretty amazing how big they are. But, uh, yeah, it'll be fun. I'm just so fired up for NBA. I, I had to mention it because it's on, and uh, it's like this is really happening. It's it's awesome. But anyway, PGA, we're fired up for that. It's uh, It looks like it's going to be uh, – a very interesting tournament. You know, we had all the superstars last week, 48 out of the top 50 golfers. And it's it's much different here. It's not that the field's bad. It's a good field. But you, you've got a you know pretty good uh, disparity between the levels of the players. So, you know, you have to put that into play here uh, a lot different. You know, somebody that might have been your last guy in last week may be your three or four man this week. Uh you know, because the depth isn't quite quite there. But before we get into uh, all the details, because we've got uh, some definite edge and things to share with you, I want to thank our sponsors uh, for today's podcast. 
That is mybookie.ag. It's a place to go for all your sports wagering and casino action. Go to mybookie.ag, use the promo code COACHTALK, all one word, no space, and you receive up to 1000 bucks as part of a 50% match play on your first deposit. And just for being a listener uh, to this podcast of DS, DFS Coach Talk, you receive a $25 free play. So make sure you use that promo code. Also, tvg.com. Uh, it is the number one horse racing site on the planet. And uh, you want to catch some racing. They've got uh, all the U.S. races. We have uh, Canadian members. They have all the Canadian races, Woodbine and those tracks up there. And then for Roush and uh, all our, our Australian folks, they have all the Australian races. So check TVG out and you get a risk-free $300 bet. So if you deposit the 300 Take a shot on a horse on TVG. If you lose, they give you the 300 back. So take advantage of that. Uh, it's the easiest way to get that is to go to our uh, website, dfscoachtalk.com. Click on the giant banner that says risk-free $300 play. And, uh, and then you just pop right in there. It'll automatically uh, give you the DFS Coach Talk offer of that $300 risk-free. So thank you very much to them. Um, Again, a big piece of this, we want to mention it now, and we'll mention it at the end, because now Twitter's going to really start coming into play, because with all the major sports, there's a lot of news, a lot of stuff being posted, especially with everything in these bubbles and different things going on. So, it, you know, with KBO, it's different. There's not a lot of Twitter rush at 3.55 a.m. on news about KBO, but it's going to be completely different now. So... Um, we are at DFS Coach Talk. I'm at Joe Sarvati, J O E S A R V A D I. He is at uh, Language Olympic, and uh, Shane is at D E T Sports Shane, and Freddie is at F R E D D I E M I L L S 7. Okay, PGA tournament. Let's get some of the ground rules out of the way here so we know what's going on it's the 3m open and it's playing at the tpc in the twin cities so minneapolis st paul has seen a really rough three months or so so uh hopefully this there's you know everything's cool and people get to go out and or then no one gets to go to it but at least they get to watch it or on tv and be a, a part of what's going on there uh in some sense but it is in Minnesota. The weather's supposed to be pretty good. Um, you know, certainly not going to be fighting the, the gigantic heat as much as uh, in the south. So it will be a little bit more reasonable play up there uh, temperature-wise. Uh, the course is a par 71, so, and, but it's over 7,400 yards. So uh, it is a long one. And, Andrew, this is, uh, you know, in, in setting the scene here, my biggest thing this week in the preparation I've done the last couple of days is to try to find the guys that can hit the ball a country mile, but they can hit it fairly straight because, you know, these court, the courses up north like that are always surrounded by lakes and streams and rivers. There's all kinds of water around this course. So yeah, you coach, can't... I, I heard a stat that there's 26 penalty areas on this course. Oh, and, you know, just looking through the scorecard, by my analysis, there's only four holes out of 18 where water is not realistically in play. So I, I think that's a very wise stat to to dig into. Absolutely. I just the, the thing is, too, though, that's key here. I mean, normally, OK, a situation like that, let's look at driving accuracy. But you can't just be accurate you need to be pretty long if you want to score. And you can't win this tournament without a, a good score. Last year, Matthew Wolf took it down minus 21. So, you know, it's going to take some shooting uh, of some, some 60s, mid and low 60s. Now, completely different than last week when we had guys shooting in the 80s, Jeez. which was just insane. I couldn't believe it. But uh, – so anyway, that's that gives you a little idea about the course and sort of what's important this week uh, as we get into it. And uh, I'll jump in with your feedback here in one second. I just want to give you 
one more piece of information. Uh, just wanted to share these with you. So for those that are going to watch or uh, if you have the PGA uh, ticket uh, for online, like I do, you get to watch every shot. Uh, just great threesomes. Uh, at 820, you got Kepka with Mitchell and Howe. At 8.30, how about this one? Dustin Johnson, Tony Finau, and Tommy Fleetwood. That's that's one to watch. Yep. And you got some young guns at 1.30 with Matthew Wolf, Max Homa, Brandon Grace. 140's Casey, Watson, and Perez. Uh, the eight, other 8.20 a.m., you got the defending cha- champ Wolf with Max Homa and Brandon Grace. And then... Uh, there's a couple other really good ones uh, also, but those are the main ones I wanted to bring up. Um, I mentioned Wolf and one twice. They have them here. Oh, okay, that's Friday. They're they're one thirty on Thursday, eight twenty on Friday. So I haven't seen any weather issues. Being is it going to favor morning, afternoon, afternoon, morning? What have you seen? Yeah, I just saw Thursday is going to be a little bit cooler in the eighties. No weather whatsoever. And then Thursday, uh, sorry, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe, you know, 20 to 30 percent chance of thunderstorms. It will be kind of muggy, uh, low 90s. So it'll be hot, uh, but doesn't look like any major advantages on the Thursday, Friday tea times. Uh, 80s or low 90s here in Dallas, we'd have to put a jacket on right now. <laughs> yeah, let's just <laughs> so very interesting. Yeah, that's all good stuff. And, I, and that's what I saw, too, because. Sometimes that's the, the key to these things is trying to catch the right weather guy, the morning afternoon thing. We've talked about it multiple times, but I don't see that being a factor uh, in this one. So anyway, uh, couple, one thing I, I want to dig into some of the main stats that you studied for this sucker, and then we'll go over the, uh, the, the mybookie.ag odds to win it a little bit. But I'm gonna, I want to give you my stat of the week and this normally I, I look at about three main stats to go by like I'll really try to choose the main issue of the week that I think is the most important to, to be strong at and you know there's a lot you can look at but I usually try to get to down to about three I'm I have it down to one this week Andrew okay I am I am looking at total driving and the reason I am is it, that tells the whole story. If you're long and you're straight, that is going to give you a good rating in uh, total driving. And I really do think that's the key. I think everybody's going to be making putts. It's going to look like the holes, you know, gigantic after this past week where you couldn't, you know, touch the ball and you missed a, a putt. So uh, to me, it's 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 getting from the tee into a position where you have a wedge and then you can make a putt. That's that's what this is going to all be about. So I wanted to ask you about some players on my total driving list, if you like them, and, uh, you know, up or down on some of these guys. So okay. uh, the guy that leads the entire PGA, number one in the, lead, in the, in the uh, PGA, Paul Casey. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, I, I like him. Um, I watched a little bit of the coverage this afternoon. They had a little charity foursome scramble. It was Casey and Fleetwood, uh, Wolf and Gordon. And, you know, he looked pretty sharp and comfortable. He just had a birthday. Um, he's, he hasn't played much since the return of golf. Only two events. He did miss the cut last week at the Memorial. Yeah, he crushed uh, me. Yeah. I had him. Yep. But with, yeah, with his driving ability, uh, and his his uh, his iron play, you know, tee to green. I do like him here this week. Yeah, I mean, I think he's got a good shot in this this kind of field. Third in in PGA is Dustin Johnson. So not only has he been smashing the life out of the ball, he's obviously keeping it straight enough to be third in the entire PGA. How about yeah, that? Yeah, just just not last week. That was incredible. You talk about the high scores. He went 80-80. And I know he's in many places the betting favorite. Uh, pretty shocking that he could play that poorly for a guy who's that good, that talented, drives it that well. Um, just crazy. He, prob- he probably hasn't gone 80 80 since he was like 12. I know it. I know it. <laughs> so that's crazy. I, yeah, I'm not planning to play him much. Me either. Yeah. 
I, I just think he's a head case. I don't think he's right. I think something's funky there. I know he's had some issues, and I wish him well. But, I mean, he can win a tournament by 10 strokes. I get it. But, man, he every time he has the club in his hand, and if you have him on your team, you're like just you, – you know it's a, not a great play when you're sitting back like, oh, is it going to – you know, where's it going? So – I'm not going there. All right, here's the the next guy on the list. The fourth in the entire uh, association is Lucas Glover. Yeah, I'm on Lucas this week. Are you? Uh, and and Freddie was on Lucas in his article. Make sure you check that out on our website, dfscoachtalk.com. Nice yep. breakdown. He went into uh, a whole uh, number of stats uh, to pick out his favorites. And Glover's just been so solid, like around the top 20, in fact, he's made all five cuts since the return to golf. And nice. last year, last year he was tied for seventh on this course, 9400 on DraftKings, decent price. Yeah, I'll have Glover in my lineups. I think he's going to be a hot play this week. I think a lot of people are going to have him in there because we had him in there last week at low ownership, and he really did a nice job. All right, here's a guy you were touting here a, a week or two ago that's up high, Doc Redmond. Yeah. So the one, you know, Freddie is supporting his his play this week as well. Uh, the one thing that kind of jumped out at me is he's made 15 of 20 cuts, but zero top tens. Yeah, that's just a little bit surprising. Bad weekend uh, play then. Yeah. And he missed the cut here last year. It missed the cut at Memorial, but he has made four or five cuts. So basically, since the return to golf, he was playing quite strong until this last week. So um yeah i think he's a decent play I, I, he's a little bit expensive at 8700 i think he might just fall by the wayside in a lot of my six-man lineups here um just because of the roster construction uh, but i think he's a solid play this guy it's just shocking to me he's 28th in all of golf in total driving and he seems when i watch him he'll crush one and then he'll hit three in the rough one over the trees it's Matthew Wolf, the defending champ. Can you believe yep. he's 28th in total? I, I guess a lot of that's because of his distance. Right. I mean, I think the driving is the best part of his game, and it's everything else that you just can't count on. And, you know, he's, in addition to winning here last year, he got that second place in Detroit at the Rocket Mortgage Classic. He was 22nd last week at the Memorial. So that's that's impressive under those tough conditions. Um He's, uh, I guess I'll have him in my lineups more than Doc Redman, even though he's more expensive. He's not, he's not my favorite play, um, but I think it does make sense. He does seem like one of those guys that will really play on the confidence of having won on this course last year. Right. Uh, so I, I put that in his favor. 21 years old. Amazing. Um, all right. Two guys left that I'll mention. Uh, one is Freddie's favorite golfer, obviously, and, you know, he's 23rd on this list, Mr. Harris English. Are you going back to the English well? Yeah. Uh, again, he's in the, he, you know, at 9,000, he's, again, sort of a tweener. Yeah. Um, to, uh, top 20, his last two events. Uh, and here's a, here's a stat I really like for a guy that's 9,000. He has five top 10s on the year. 12 out of 14 cuts. And so I think that's why Freddie is on him for the top 20. He's just so consistent. And a guy, you know, there aren't many guys in this tournament who have five top 10s. No. Um, so I, I do like that. And the price isn't bad. So, you know, certainly somebody you have to look at. Then the last guy I'm going to throw in there because, you know, he, he made the cut for me last week as my last man in. And he's in the top 45 in total driving. Sepp Spraka. I know you didn't, you weren't real high on him when I played him last last week, but he stuck in there for me. Yep, uh, solid pick. Um, I don't know if I'll if I'll go there. I'm not, you know, there's nothing that's jumping out at me about him, um, but I would understand why you might want to play him. Well, I mean, here's my the the thing that I always want to bring up too, and it's hard because. When we, when we uh, go through these, everybody can go through the Dustin Johnsons and the, you know, all the top guys. 
it's finding those Straka's or Englishes or the guys that are going to be cheaper because, you know, it, it's very tough, especially DraftKings pricing is even tougher. You've got to have like two good guys, two mid, very mid level, and then two sort of cheaper guys. I mean, they make you, they don't let you stack like you can in other sports where you can, you know, find a guy that's mispriced in baseball or hoops or whatever and sort of use that salary somewhere else. In golf, it's just such a static sport where here's the stats, here's the pricing, and it, you know, it's, it's very much more difficult. And a lot of the times, if you look at the top of those uh, Millie Maker contests, it's not the big dudes that do it. It's they have like, they'll have three really great dudes, a lot of them last week, because I, I checked out like the top 100 in the Millie Maker. A lot of them had three studs and they all ended up performing. And then three cheap guys that all made the cut and stuck through it through the weekend. So that's, you know, you can go that build, you know, stars and scrubs, but man, it's it's painful when your the scrubs don't make the cut and you're dead. Or, you know, I like to sort of make more of a two-two-two approach and at least feel like my top four of the six are really, really solid chance to make the cut. So a couple different ways you can build it. Yeah, and you know, the the pricing is is kind of interesting here. By the way, I agree with you. This week, it's, it's much tougher to build your lineup on DraftKings than FanDuel. Yeah. Um, and so I will have some builds on DraftKings with three of the more expensive guys, three of the cheaper guys. And the pricing on this course is, uh, in this tournament, is really uh, interesting because if you go back to last year's results, um, out of the top 52 players who finished in the top 52 last year, only 24 are returning this year. Wow. And most of them are pretty cheap. Um, for example, in uh, if you go from the 23rd finishing place to 52nd, there's mm -hmm. only there aren't any guys who are priced over eight thousand, and there's only one guy over seventy five hundred. So That's it's a bunch weird. of it's a bunch of cheap guys, these kind of journeyman players that you don't think about much, you don't play that much. Um, but that's who had success here last year. And then same thing if you go to the top 20. And so I want to go through some of these guys because I'm, I'm looking at, you know, course history, even though it's only one year and recent form, just to get a feel and combine those two. So my, mm -hmm. uh, so Wolf, of course, is, is at the top. Um, I'm just going to go through the guys who are in the top 20 uh, okay. who are coming back this year. Wyndham Clark was tied for fifth. He's only made one out of five cuts since the return to golf, so I probably won't no, go there. No Sam, Sam Burns, here's a nice value play, 8,500. Right. He finished seventh last year. Listen to his last three tournaments. He's playing golf. 24th, 30th, and 17th. Beautiful. Uh, Lucas Glover, we've already talked about him, five for five cuts. Brian Harmon, who I like to play, he's only 8,000, but he's missed his last three cuts. He mm. tied for seventh here last year. And then Troy Merritt tied for seventh. He's only 7,500. Uh, he's made four of, of six cuts since the yeah. return of golf, including an eighth and a 22nd. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could go there. Fabian Gomez, uh, he tied for 13th. He's 6,300. He's only made one of three cuts. Scott Brown, similar, 6,300. He's only made one of four cuts. Scott Piercy tied for 15th here last year. He's only 7,000. He's made 12 of 15 cuts on the year, two of three nice. cuts since the return to golf. And then two two other cheap guys, Roger Sloan at 6,500. He's made two of four cuts. And Sean Stefani, 6,300. He's 0 for 1. So the did reason say, I went through Did you this, say Gwen Stefani? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's no, just... He's going to be a top 10 this week. That's for sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so, I mean, we know that this tournament is one that a lot of the big names aren't going to be here. And so it was just interesting to me to look at last year's results and all these guys who finished top 20 and they're back and they're under 8K. So, you know, uh, wanted to go through some of that. Um, That's great stuff. I, I got something to ask you here. Sure. Uh, you talked about Dustin Johnson. Let's say you had to pick either Brooks Kepka or Dustin Johnson this week. 
to play in one of your lineups. They're about the same price. Who are you going with? Well, I'll answer it, but I will begin by saying there's no way in hell I'm rostering either guy. 11-5 okay. and 11-2 on DraftKings, and they're both playing like out of just stupid golf a lot of the time. I, I can't figure those two guys out. Now, they could both shoot 63, you know, on any given day, but I don't particularly want either one of them at all at that price. But if you force me to choose between the two, I would probably take Kepka because okay. – even though he was terrible, he just in, when he gets rolling, he can roll six birdies in, in a row like nobody's business. Not that DJ can't, but Kepka seems to be more of a momentum train than anybody. Yeah, especially recently, even though he's been playing poorly, he has had stretches. And a couple of things about Kepka that I want to mention: I would play him over DJ as well. He did play here last year. He only finished sixty fifth. Um, but I listened to a lot of his interviews, uh, a lot of the cuts from his interviews this week, and you know he's he's sitting at 154th in the FedEx Cup standings. He needs some good finishes here, and he's been playing every week. You know he's grinding it out, you know trying to move up the standings, and you know he's just too good to keep playing poorly. And you know he he, he talked about how when he's walking downhill, his knee is still bothering him a little bit. Oh. Um, so, you know, there is that. He said it's not an excuse. But he also said that he feels like if he just hits one shot perfectly, maybe that'll turn it around. He'll get in the groove. Um, and so because I'm just I'm thinking about playing him maybe 10 to 20 percent of my lineups because I think a lot of people are going to be really frustrated with what he's done the last couple of weeks. They're not going to play him. And they'll look at some of these ten thousand dollar guys, which makes a lot of sense. That's what I'm going to do for the majority of my lineups. But I just can't, I just can't not play him at all, because if he does figure it out, especially with all this pressure that he's grinding it out, trying to move up the standings, I mean, it's just it's going to happen eventually, right? We know it's not he's not going to just be like this for the next year. He's going to figure it out at some point. So. Uh, I'll play him in a couple lineups, but I and I do prefer him over DJ as well. Yeah, you know, the only reason I can't pull the trigger on him, and I get it. I mean, you know, he easily could win the tournament, but I just haven't liked his body language. He just, mm -hmm. like I said, he just doesn't look like he's enjoying himself. It's like he's really pressing. Yeah. And for for whatever reason, uh, you know, it just he does not look like he has any type of sync to his game whatsoever right now so again maybe he you know knocks a long putt in and all of a sudden you know the the brain clicks and he gets it going but i'm not gonna you know at that kind of price i mean if you take a guy that's 11-2 for example on DraftKings, then you know you really put yourself behind the eight ball with having to take a couple of value guys uh, right off the bat because you know even the second wave guys like Wolf and Glover and Watson and Casey. I mean, they're $1,500 less than him a lot, a lot of spots. So, you know, I do want to mention this, and, and I had this question come in uh, on our next podcast that wanted me to mention it. Uh, it wasn't really for PGA, but it, it goes for all of the sports because it's a general question. And they said, uh, what, what do you play more, DraftKings or FanDuel? And my answer was very simple. It completely depends on the slate. And that's how everybody should look at this with every sport, because you're going to have some times where it just screams at you pricing wise and that what fits one over the other. And sometimes there's some mispricings you can take advantage of. Uh, and, you know, so I will go as much as literally 90 percent, 10 percent like I'm going to do this week. And that's why I bring it up, the question, and because I'm doing it. I love the build and the pricing on FanDuel. I'm going to hammer the living daylights out of FanDuel, play a little DraftKings, but mainly FanDuel. Now, you know, it could be completely different next week. So my point is, you know, and, and to answer that question, uh, that that's what you have to do. You have to look at the slate, the situation, and the pricing because they they are going to vary especially you know 
all of these folks setting this, these prices for, for DraftKings and FanDuel, they have to figure out how is this going to affect, the bubble going to affect people? How much are they going to play? Is their role going to be different? Am I underpricing them, overpricing them? So, you know, the, this is one of the toughest challenges they've had, at, you know, DraftKings and FanDuel in preparing for these U.S. sports. And I believe they've both been doing a lot of pre-work uh, to get ready for it. But you know what? You can't really do that much pre-work because things change every day. Every single day, something changes. Yesterday, Patrick Beverly left the bubble. They're not sure when he's coming back. I mean, those pieces of news, every single one of them is impactful on DFS pricing because it changes the whole rotation, minutes played. So point being, this is the kind of slate for me that I think the pricing on FanDuel is ex- you know, s- substantially better than DraftKings for the kind of build I'm putting together. Not to say that you should play 90-10 FanDuel, but if you have a few guys that you're focusing on, or if you become a member at DFSCoachTalk.com, by the way, you still get eight more days for free. July 30th, this, the clock starts on our memberships. But, you know, you may be just a GPP player that wants to go in the, you know, try to hit big and go in some of the lower price uh Events and that's you know situation you got to look at the slate and there are some I think better choices for contest selection on DraftKings for that type of a play. But for me, I'm more of a cash player and I like uh, some of the small like single entry hundred dollars those kind of events where you can still take down a good chunk of money and you know use what I think I've got is about five guys. My six guys still haven't decided on that, that I think are going to make the cut and be right in the thick of it. So that's my that's my theory there. How, how about you with contest selection or should I say site selection? Yeah, I do think it depends on the slate and the sport. Um, for golf, I generally do prefer DraftKings. I like the, the variety of contests, the bigger prizes. And in fact, I got a little bit surprised this evening. I was looking at FanDuel there you know, the the big top prize of like 30,000 entry fee of like $9, I think it was. It was already full. I couldn't believe it. So wow. uh, l- lesson learned on that. So I'm going to have to play more on DraftKings this week. And uh, the final thing I want to add here to our golf podcast, a couple fun facts about the cheap players. You talk about roster construction on, fa- on, on DraftKings. You really have to look at some of these guys in the $6,000 range. And so just for fun, I got two facts here. One of them is there's this golfer, Angus Flanagan, who's only 6,000. And I got to give a shout out to my that's friend. A made up, that's a made up character, isn't it? It, it <laughs> sounds like it, right? Uh, maybe he'd be the secret, though, to a special uh, team. And I got to give a shout out to my friend, John, who does a lot of behind the scenes uh, research and sends me nuggets here, here and there. And, and this was one of them. This is a guy who won the state open in Minnesota with a 64 He's a senior at the University of Minnesota, so kind of a home course situation for him. So there's a guy you could look at. Uh, wow. And then one more uh, minimum price player on DraftKings, good old Tom Lehman, one of the real veterans of the what? game. He's my age, for God's sake. I know it. So you might want to play him. Do you know why? He has been involved in redesigning this course. I know he has. So he knows it like the back of his hand. It's an Arnold Palmer course, and, right. and he – and Lehman spent a lot of time, and he turned it over to Lehman to reconstruct. You know, Lehman's really good. He's he's getting involved with a lot of course uh, reconstructions. Uh, he's he's an interesting uh, interesting setup. But I'll tell you what: if you look at Lehman's stuff, a lot of lot of uh, trouble. He likes water, yeah. uh, sand, all kinds of trouble. He likes, uh, I think, people to have to be accurate. So sorry. And yeah, well, the thing is, he made the cut here last year, so we know he can do it. Uh, so just something to keep in mind if you're looking for a six thousand dollar player. I don't have the courage to do it, but I, I didn't I think like, you would. <laughs> I like the sentiment. <laughs> in a cash lineup, if I'm sweating on layman, yeah. I'm in deep doo doo. Yeah, but I hope got, I hope he makes it. I always yeah, root got, for the older guys. You've got plenty of courage, but this is in terms of a uh, a selection for a, a DFS lineup. This does feel more like an Andrew play in a GPP than a coach play. Without question. No doubt about it. 
Um, all right, any other statistical things you want to slice and dice? I'm good to go. You're you're done, huh? Yep. Um, let's go to the mybookie.ag. And I'm not even going to bore our listeners with quizzing you because you win every single time. But we'll just let's just chit chat about this a little bit because the odds don't lie. And, you know, you generally go back. If you look at the odds going into the tournament, a lot of the top 20 finishers are in this first pool of 30 or 40 guys. So it is key to know uh, what you're dealing with here. So we have uh, Dustin Johnson plus 900, which is Pretty good favorite, I know. Gunslingers out there. Kepka, your man, plus 1,200. Here's a guy that fell apart the other day. Holy Toledo. Tony Finau. The wheels yeah. came off that bus. That was ugly to watch. But, yeah. Uh, I think he'll be pretty popular this week, though. I do, too. I mean, you talk about total driving. The guy can absolutely crush it. Uh, five top tens this year. So that we'll just see if he can rebound. It was a final round 78 on Sunday, so that'll be the mental challenge he's going to have to overcome. I mean, a lot of people shot those numbers, but watching when he shot it, it was like literally wheels off. That's yeah. It's like what happens to me on the golf course. As soon as I hit one out of bounds or something, <laughs> I, I just can't pull it back together. Uh, here's a guy that I absolutely love, but I don't know if he's hit a golf ball in four months, and it's Tommy Fleetwood. Yeah, he's I'm excited so about Tommy. Good. Oh, I, like I love Tom. his game. Yeah. Um, it's fun to watch him a little bit in that uh, exhibition this afternoon. I will have some exposure to him. He's just too good. Uh, you know, he's two top tens, made seven of eight cuts, so consistent, great ball striking. Um, so I, I certainly will have him uh, this this weekend. Me too. I mean, he's a total driving machine and just steady. Uh, only plus 1,600, fourth choice, considering – he hasn't played in a single event since uh, Corona. So uh, then you got Paul Casey, who I'm a little sour, man. I got to say, you know, you, in D, you have to forget the week before in DFS and you can't carry a grudge. But I have a slight grudge. It's only Wednesday. So I need to just forget about Casey just not making the cut last week. He's this this course could play into his hands. There's no doubt uh, he's he's a good crafty guy. Then you have Matthew Wolf at 2,500. Certainly going to get a lot of action from people. Uh, your buddy Bubba Watson, all the way up to like the seventh choice after being super cheap last week. Uh, do you have any faith in Bubba? Faith in Bubba, that's that's a strong word. Uh, huh. I, don't, I don't know if I can go that far. Um, so he's, you know, he's a little bit, he's a level below, I guess, for the higher price guys in terms of my interest this week. Yeah, I'm with you. Then I'll, I'll give you a group of names here real quickly because I think all these guys you got to consider, and we've mentioned every one of them, uh, almost every one of them. So here's the group that, that are right there. These are literally the top 20 favorite guys to win the tournament. Russell Henley, Lucas Glover, Harris English, Eric Van Ruyen, Doc Redman, Sam Burns, Luke List, and Sepp Straka. So... The depth in this tournament's not quite like last week's. That's right. <laughs> so it is going to be a real challenge, um, but I think it's going to be a fun one. It really is because there's a lot of people with shots here, and uh, you know should be should be very competitive. Anything else from your side from the golf uh, golf wizardry? The last comment is uh, is on Eric Van Ruyen. I've you know heard a lot of folks hyping him up this week because he went to school in Minnesota. Um, so if you like that narrative, I guess he married a local girl. You know this this is sort of a, a good vibes for him. Um, he was tied for 22nd last week. This might be a Sugar Shane play though, where we fade the chalk a little bit. Um, so I, I I understand the narrative, but. Again, he's in that $8,800 price range where I just don't think I'll be there that much. Uh, I think I will have a little bit more stars and scrubs on DraftKings. So uh, that'll be a fun one to, to see is just how much ownership he gets and if it pays off or not. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one. There's no doubt about it. Now, we'll be uh, posting this podcast. It'll be out early evening, so you'll have all night to listen. Uh, then uh, probably around 
10 Eastern, 9 Central, you know, maybe 9.30, somewhere in there, we'll post uh, in Discord. I'll be posting my full FanDuel lineup, and uh, Andrew will be uh, posting the, the coach's core group for DraftKings. And uh, so, you know, you want to definitely jump in Discord uh, to catch that. And then uh, it looks as though uh, no KBO tonight because they're having like a typhoon in Korea. So we're, we're going to get a, actually sleep so we can get up and watch um, golf in the morning. And got to love that. And then Major League Baseball tomorrow night starts. And then the NBA is a few days away. Uh, check out uh, You can check out a lot of these NBA scrimmages on NBA TV, too. So it's never too early to scout that stuff as it's right on the doorstep now. And then tomorrow, podcast-wise, it'll be Andrew and I. Hopefully the, the uh, typhoon has left Korea and we're able to get back into some KBO because this is uh, stopping our hot streak. We've been hitting some stuff, and now this all this rain is... is uh, taking care of things. Last night was painful because uh, it went from five to, to three and then thought, that's okay. We just need these two. And then it was two. And then all of a sudden somebody says they're all, they're not playing. Only one's playing. And I'm, I refuse. I'm the conspiracy theorist. So I was scouting around trying to find where maybe two games were playing. I started building another lineup. I refused to give up. <laughs> and, then, and then finally, you, you must have seen me on there scouting around because you said, give it up, coach. <laughs> yeah, it, it ain't happening. <laughs> right. Yeah, I saw the second source. I had two sources confirm it. So I was finally comfortable because I was doing the same thing, you know, just in case you never know. Uh, but sure enough, only one game played. So, yeah, unfortunately, we got so much rain over there, but we'll get back after it tomorrow. Absolutely. And as you can see, I'm back in the light. I'm actually out of the corner of my room where I was dark and yellow for the last <laughs> podcast, feeling better. Again, thank you for everybody for all the great well wishes to definitely help uh, to expedite feeling better. So, all right. Uh, we want to mention our uh, charity of choice, mombon3.org, M-A-M-B-A-O-N-T-H-R-E.org. A great, great charity set up uh, by the uh, Brian family. Check out our website, dfscoachtalk.com. This is the time to jump on. Uh, you know, we will be providing end of KBO and then transition into MLB, uh, certainly PGA every week, and then our key sports of NBA and uh, NFL is not that far off either. So we got all kinds of stuff happening. Uh, we're really excited. We'd love to have you join the fastest growing community in the DFS industry space. Uh, so come in, check us out. And uh, and that's really about it. Any final words? No, thank you all for listening. And let's get after it here for a big PGA weekend. Big PGA weekend. Uh, and reminder, no Friday show. We're now doing PGA just on Wednesdays. So if you need to reload, you know, get in Discord with us. We'll chit-chat about some... Uh, some picks going into the weekend, but, you know, take these and, and hang on to them for some of the ones that we mentioned that make the cut. You, you know, if you do need to reload Friday, just, you know, use some of those guys again. Uh, and sometimes that pays off. That's sort of been my pattern lately. And so I'll, I'll take what you take, what you can get. That's <laughs> so, right. Excellent. Have a great uh, evening. Uh, and we'll catch you tomorrow for uh, some KBO uh, podcast action. And we will be looking to crush it in DFS.